Thank you very much, uh, Bill and Doug. Doug talked about that longevity. Good clean living will do it. <laughs> I'm proud uh, to say that uh, last night we had our little function at the uh, bottom line, and there was a lot of uh, Molson Canadian that was consumed, and the New Brunswickers outlasted the Calgarians. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much, uh, Doug, for your very eloquent words. MC uh, Dick, Chairman Bill, uh, fellow honorees, Commissioner Bettman, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure what I should be saying up here because I've been getting lots of advice since, uh, since all of this was uh, announced that I had won the Foster Hewitt Memorial Award. I've had some people tell me, oh, don't be emotional. I had some people tell me, oh, come from the heart. I had some people say, don't be very long. <laughs> some people told me, speak as long as you want. Gary Bedman told me, you recognize everybody that's in this room that had something to do with your life and elsewhere. If that's the case, I'll be here all day and we'll miss the induction tonight at the Hall of Fame. So I think I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to be me, if that's okay. Yeah. And uh, we'll go on from there. First off, I consider myself to be the luckiest person in the world. I am blessed to be doing something that I can't think anything else I'd rather be doing but broadcasting hockey games and to have broadcast hockey games as long as I have is certainly something that uh, I, I could never ever imagine in, in my life. Uh, started in New Brunswick, the Cavalton uh, Dalhousie teams, and uh, I started in the NHL when it was the original 17, and I'm proud to say, <laughs> I'm proud to say I'm still broadcasting with the original 30. <laughs> it is an honor and a privilege for me to be a broadcaster in the National Hockey League, the greatest league in the world. And I don't take this work very lightly. I try to maintain a high standard of broadcasting quality each night that I step behind the microphone to broadcast a game. I'm not really sure that I'm worthy of this Foster Hewitt Memorial Award and all the acclaim that, uh, that has been bestowed upon me with this. I'm honored to accept it on behalf of people who have played a part in my career and my life, all of them. I'm internally grateful to all of these people because without them, this certainly would not be possible. I try to be good to the game of hockey, and I know for certain that the game has been extremely, extremely good to me. Fellow honorees, Scott Morrison, fellow that uh, I got to know when I started here in Toronto, outstanding character, great person, great writer, and very insightful, and on television, is also handles himself extremely well. You can almost come in in the broadcast category. <laughs> At Dick Duff. Dick was with the Leafs when I started in Toronto and one day on the uh, airplane they uh, asked me to go play in the poker game with them with uh, Jim Gregory and uh, Floyd Smith and, and Dick Duff and uh, Dick needed a partner so he asked me. He only asked me once. <laughs> I think we lost a lot of money that afternoon. Uh, Herb Brooks and his family there was one particular day when Herb was coaching in New Jersey. He knew me as a, as a broadcaster. Other than that, not all that well, but uh, his team was having some difficulties at that time. And I still remember him sitting down with me and after I'd done an interview with him and confiding in me in a, a few of the things that were happening with the team that weren't so very good. And I, I kind of always thought that was kind of really neat that a fellow that hardly knew me uh, would confide in me in some of the difficulties that he was having. So I really wish that Herb could be here uh, today and, uh, and uh, receive all of these accolades, but I'm sure uh, his family, uh, my congratulations on behalf of uh, myself. Harley Hotchkiss, wonderful, wonderful gentleman. I owe an awful lot of my career to uh, Harley and the owners of the Flames. Doc, BJ, the two Al's, Jeff, Clay, and Murray. Without you guys, I wouldn't be standing here this afternoon. Flame franchise at times has been in a little bit of peril, but these guys, with their persistence and dedication, have made it uh, 26 years now in the National Hockey League in Calgary, and that uh, has certainly helped add to my uh, longevity and the support that I have gotten from uh, the ownership, from management, coaches, players, 
uh, trainers, doctors, everybody with the organization has been absolutely, uh, absolutely phenomenal. Now, when uh, Harley got the uh, news that he was uh, going to be uh, inducted here, he told me, he said, on Monday, we're going to paint the town red. <laughs> well, well, I don't know about Harley, but I've got a game tomorrow night. So, <laughs> so if I'm not with you, Harley, my boys from New Brunswick will be right there. <laughs> Patrick Waugh, what an outstanding, outstanding goaltender. The winningest goaltender in the, uh, in the history of the National Hockey League and uh, a phenomenal, phenomenal competitor. Although I must say, Patrick, I've had the pleasure of calling a lot of goals scored against you. <laughs> Not enough in 1986 <laughs> and more than enough in 1989. So congratulations to all of you and uh, hope you're enjoying this day as much as, uh, as I am. Dick mentioned the fact that I uh, had a hole in one about three weeks after I got the news that I uh, was the winner of the Foster Hewitt Award. And uh, that is the athletic achievement of my career. It certainly doesn't uh, go as high as uh, this one, but uh, considering what kind of an athlete I, is, I am, it's, uh, it's quite a recognizable accomplishment for me. And it's living proof, living proof that uh, Holding ones are more about luck than skill. <laughs> I was playing with Peter McKean right over there when I got the uh, the hole in one, so he can attest that it actually happened. Tell Bush there, he's over there. He, he doesn't quite believe it. I want to thank uh, Roger Millions for uh, nominating me for this honor. I want to thank the NHL Broadcast Association Selection Committee for selecting me uh, for this. And I also want to uh, thank the uh, crew from the Hall of Fame, Jeff and Kelly, Bill, and all the rest of the gang. Uh, I cannot thank you all enough for all of the help that you've been for myself and my family and, uh, and friends over, the, uh, over this time. And uh, Kelly, I mean, I think she deserves a raise or at least a week off. <laughs> I don't think she's going to get it, though. <laughs> uh, they mentioned earlier my hometown is Campbellton, New Brunswick. And uh, when, I was, uh, when I was a youngster, I uh, was a goaltender. And Patrick, I thought I was a pretty good goalie. <laughs> then uh, I moved up to the midget ranks and they started taking slap shots. That's when I realized you could talk a lot faster than I could move. <laughs> <laughs> and as a teenager, it was Doug Young that put me on the radio at uh, CKNB in Campbellton. I worked cheap, but what an experience. It uh, certainly paved the way for, uh, for my career. I came to Toronto in 1978 to broadcast the Maple Leaf Games on the uh, CKO radio network. And with the weight of the hockey world on his shoulders, given all of the uh, controversy that was going on with CKO acquiring the rights from Foster Hewitt CKFH, station, CKFH radio station, David Ruskin placed some confidence in me and took a chance and hired me to be the uh, new play-by-play -play voice for the Maple Leafs. And David, uh, I'm eternally grateful uh, for that as well. And uh, I guess you made a good selection. <laughs> you know, I've been fortunate since I've been in the, uh, in the NHL. I haven't worked for that many uh, companies with CKO. I worked with Western Broadcasting, Rolco Communications, Rogers Broadcasting. And they paid me a bit more money than Doug used to pay me there at CKNB. <laughs> But I want to thank all of these uh, people for, uh, for their support and, uh, and uh, loyalty that I've received from them over the years. I haven't broadcast for too many teams either. I started off in, uh, in uh, New Brunswick, the Campbellton Tigers, two Hardy Cup championships, three trips to the Hardy Cup final, and later they would have a fourth one after I left. So it had nothing to do with me, they proved it then. Uh, the Dalhousie Rangers, who offered a lot of good memories from a weekend in Newfoundland. Uh, the Maple Leafs, great memories with Mr. Ballard, Jim Gregory, and all the rest of that crew, and what, what, what help I got from them when I started. Here was this little guy from a, from a city of 7,000 people coming up to this massive community of Toronto to be the play-by-play -play broadcaster for the Leafs. It was, uh, there was a lot of pressure at that time, but uh, Jim and uh, Mr. Ballard and uh, all the rest of the crew certainly made that a lot easier. And then, of course, so we go to Calgary, and that turns out to be, as Nick Duff mentioned to me last night, the greatest thing that happened to your career. And um, the Flames 
Stanley Cup in, in 1989, Coatsy and Crispy and all the rest of the gang that were part of that. And of course, in, in 2004, a run to the Stanley Cup final, Ken King, Daryl Sutter, and all the rest of the guys that were part of that team. And that, uh, that run to the Stanley Cup final brought back that phrase, yeah, baby. And that was put in mothballs there for a little while. For those of you that may not be aware of this Yeah Baby tour, which I'm a little embarrassed by sometimes because I try to, when I broadcast, I try to uh, maintain that there are two teams on the ice, but uh, this Yeah Baby is something that's, uh, that's crept into my uh, vocabulary and it's certainly got an awful lot of acclaim, even though, as I say, it's embarrassing to me sometimes. But um, uh, it's only uh, two words that I use when it's something major that has happened with the Flame hockey team. And just merely winning a game isn't enough. Merely a four-game winning streak as a team is on now, not nearly enough. Four games to win in the playoff series, that's enough. And if you win 16, you're probably going to get 16 yeah babies at the end of the game. <laughs> so these people have all been great, uh, great cooperation to me over the years, and uh, I want to thank all of them. And I have a tremendous amount of broadcast colleagues that I've had over the years. I, uh, and I want to thank all of them. When I started here in Toronto, uh, Dick mentioned it, the late Red Story, my first color commentator. So what a guy to have at your side when you're uh, breaking into the NHL. I mentioned the pressure and all that stuff that it was under. Having a, having a guy like Red there with those great uh, stories that he would tell uh, certainly livened it up uh, tremendously and took the, took the pressure off me. And uh, Billy Harris, the late Bill Harris, he worked with me on a lot of the broadcasts as well uh, here in Toronto. And I went to uh, Toronto, to uh, Calgary, and uh, Doug Barfley for 21 years, uh, my color commentator. And you know, uh, Doug mentioned this is probably going to be the closest he's going to win a broadcasting award. It's a little known award in the NHL, but uh, Doug actually won the uh, won the award a few years back for the best color commentator in the National Hockey League. Also, the only one. <laughs> But I can tell you, if he hadn't lost that one eye while playing uh, with the Detroit Red Wings, he would have gone on to a Hall of Fame career in the NHL. So uh, this guy was an awesome player and uh, a very good friend and a very good uh, color commentator. And then I got uh, Mike Rogers replaced Doug when Doug retired. And, uh, and Mike likes to tell me that he put Gordy Howe and Bobby Hall in the Hall of Fame. And now he's claiming me too. <laughs> Uh, these guys permit tremendous knowledge of the game and great insights of the game and certainly big, big helps, uh, helps to me in, uh, in my broadcasting the play-by-play. -play. I'd also like to thank all of the hosts that I've had. Rob Kerr is here from, uh, from the fan in Calgary. Uh, I've had a whole uh, crew of uh, hosts over the years and as well as the management of all the radio stations, salespeople, technical people that keep the broadcasts all under control. Unfortunately, uh, my two biggest fans are not here today. My mother and my father. Uh, my mother passed away four years ago. My dad passed away uh, five months ago. And uh, uh, it was great that I had the funeral in March. We didn't bury him at the time because of the snow in New Brunswick is pretty high and the ground very hard. So I was down in, uh, in uh, end of May in New Brunswick in Moncton and we had the burial service for my dad the day we got the news that uh, that I had won the Foster Hewitt Memorial Award, so made the announcement to my family then. So that was uh, that was nice to be able to do that on that particular occasion. To remember my uh, mother and father today, I have with me my mother's last letter that she ever sent me, and uh, my father's wristwatch that he had when he moved on to greater things. I know that even though they're not in this room, they're watching, and I can guarantee you they're having a drink. <laughs> I also have my two brothers, my two sisters that are here today, Alan and Noonan. They've been uh, guys that I played hockey on the street with and offered tremendous, tremendous support. And over all of the years, Alan had great hockey knowledge because he's the older guy, and Noonan and I had to keep him out of trouble all the time. And uh, then, of course, I have the two cheerleaders, Wendy and, and Nancy, and they have been just awesome as well. Now there's the Hall of Fame family. Stanley Cup family, that words can never describe the gratitude for what my family members have sacrificed uh, over all of these years. The understanding, the patience, the love, and the support that I have been received from them is just absolutely, absolutely awesome. They've allowed me to have the necessary commitment to broadcasting 
that puts me in where we are here today. So to Nancy, to Jeff, Tricia, Russ, Haley, and Sydney, thank you all so very, very much. And I love you all. My biggest thanks is the fans. Without the fans, their support, and loyalty, and listening, I wouldn't be here today. And I uh, really want to thank all the fans that listen to me here in Toronto and the fans that listen to me in Calgary and in Southern Alberta over all of these years. As I say, without them, the show uh, wouldn't go on and uh, we wouldn't have this type of celebration. So my appreciation pledge to these fans is to continue to be the very best that I can be every night. So thank you all very much for uh, listening to me and uh, thank you all for honoring me and having all my family and, and friends here today to join with us. It's just absolutely awesome. Yeah, baby!